I mean, more like carbon upsetting, am I right? Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am so happy that you wanted to join me today because today we're going to talk about carbon offsetting and plant the tree campaigns and we're going to find out whether or not it's actually legit. What is going on? What is the impact of these campaigns and programs? And generally I want to add some transparency to an industry and a field within sustainability that is very untransparent inherently. So I asked you guys on Instagram if you had any questions about carbon offsetting and damn, did you guys come through? There were so many questions, everything from I just wanna know if it actually works to more specific companies and just we're going to try and get through all of it. So yeah, and I'm in like a very cliche, classic Guy de Mary get up today. I feel like this has been a uniform for quite some time and I haven't worn my hat in ages. But we don't have time to talk about that because we have quite a lot of stuff to go through. So uh, let's get started. First of all, let's talk about what is carbon offsetting? You know, like what is the definition of carbon offsetting? Carbon offsetting, which I've said quite a few times now, it sounds weird, but they're programs and initiatives that implement a measurable avoidance or reduction of carbon or other greenhouse gases. And they work in one of two ways, one way being slightly more straightforward and simple and the other being quite complex. So uh, let's see if we can figure this out. Consumers can support organizations by themselves as an individual by donating money to an organization that will use that money to fund projects different places in the world. For instance, that's one way of carbon offsetting for you as an individual, but there's also a way for companies and bigger industries to do so. And that is when it gets a little more complicated. It works almost like the real estate market. There is a client that is usually a company or a brand or an industry. And then there's a broker who will then sell carbon offsets to that industry. And they will sell them for other clients as other companies or through other brokers. So it almost becomes like the real estate market. Generally, carbon offsetting can be divided into four different categories. And I think it's important to keep those four categories in mind whenever we talk about carbon offsetting. The first one is biological reserves in which new trees are planted or older trees are cared for. And then the CO2 from those trees while under protection of the program is used as the product that is then used for carbon offsetting. An example of which, aha, Air France made a campaign where they offered carbon offsetting for passengers flights for an additional price. Then you could fly green and the company would use that money to purchase trees or the carbon offset those trees produce. The second type of carbon offsetting is related to renewable green energy sources. This is where investments go towards funding energy sources that do not emit carbon. The calculated carbon saved is then sold as the product for carbon offsetting. An example of which being a company uses their money for carbon offsetting to fund projects that then deliver solar panels to places that would normally have used fossil fuels for power. Then the carbon emissions that is then saved is used as the products for carbon offsetting. The third one is called energy efficiency. And this is when your money goes towards funding projects within construction, building or electricity, where we try and optimize the energy output and input in different products. An example of which a company that manufactures kitchen appliances came up with an oven that only needs a small amount of wood pellets to work. They then donated 1,000 of these ovens to people living in the Andes who would normally use wood for heating and for cooking. And the trees those 1,000 ovens saved were then sold by another company as carbon offsets. The fourth one is called reduction of non-CO2 emissions. And this is when brands or organizations or funds work towards reducing emissions that is not related to CO2, but from other sources like methane. Okay, so those are the four types of carbon offsets. Carbon offsetting is often offered to customers as compensation for a product or a service they have purchased, or it's used by companies to try and reduce their own emissions. As we can see, carbon offsets can look many, many different ways and words like carbon offsets or carbon neutral has begun to mean many, many vastly different things. And that has got a lot of people wondering whether or not it matters or even works at all. And it can work. <laughs> which I think is the most diplomatic way of putting it. But there are so many 
many gray areas that I think we should be looking out for, both as consumers and as individuals that are interested in sustainability. One of the things I really want to talk about is carbon offsetting related to planting trees, because planting trees is one of the most popular ways of carbon offsetting, which is why I think it's the one we should talk about the most you feel because first of all planting a tree is always a good deed we need more trees and we need to protect the trees that we already have 100 percent an average tree absorbs about one ton of co2 in its lifetime and with deforestation and intense agriculture and wildfires we definitely need to protect green areas all over the world and we need to make sure that new trees are constantly planted to take all the trees Place. However, many companies will mislead consumers into thinking that their services and products can be compensated for instantly because a tree is planted. But in fact, it can take many decades for a tree to grow big enough to absorb enough CO2 for it to be significant. So it's not an instant green action, it's something that takes a long time. And the way of communicating this instant green action, which is not that instant in real life, leads me to the first thing I want to talk about, which is communication. Carbon offset programs and initiatives are extremely complicated arrangements, or they can be at least. But in the industry and with a lot of companies, they are often watered down and simplified in order for consumers to understand them better. And that often leads to a lot of mis communication, a lot of misinterpretations of what is actually going on and it leads to a lot of misleading information about what consumers are actually supporting. And because carbon offsets are not necessarily your money going directly towards an organization but because it can go through brokers, many brokers, it becomes almost impossible to find out where your money actually ends up and what projects you're actually supporting, if you're actually supporting any programs. As a result, carbon offsetting becomes really hard to navigate and is used as a tool of marketing rather than something that inspires actual change. Some companies purchase carbon offsets and then promote their business as carbon neutral as the purchase offsets are equal to their own emissions. However, to consumers, we're going carbon neutral can often be misunderstood. When we hear going carbon neutral, we don't necessarily think that a company purchased carbon offsets equal to their own emissions. When we when we hear we're going carbon neutral, we often think, oh, this company did something within their own supply chain, within their own products, to try and change it and to emit less and even no CO2. That is usually what we tend to think of when we hear we are going carbon neutral. Because the claim we're going carbon neutral is technically not untrue, it's just rather misleading. I have an example. Aha! Some airlines like Air France have promoted some of their routes as carbon neutral because they are 100% compensating for these emissions from their planes in carbon offsetting programs. And they can technically call themselves carbon neutral because they are buying carbon offsets equal to their own emissions. But for instance, Google headquarters are also saying that they are carbon neutral. And the reason why they are saying it is because all of their headquarters are running on renewable energy sources, for instance, through solar panels on the roof. So they don't have any CO2 emissions because all their energy is generated through renewable sources. And that is also going carbon neutral. These two instances can use the term we are going carbon neutral in the completely same way, but I hope that you can see that those instances are two very, very different ones, where one bought something and the other actually did something themselves. Wonder which one I prefer. <laughs> I mean, more like carbon upsetting, am I right? Legally, I also have to tell you that that was not my joke, that was Jens's joke, so. But is it wrong to advertise your green actions? I've been talking a lot about how carbon offsetting often becomes a marketing tool. And is that a bad thing? Well, technically it's not actually a bad thing. It's only a bad thing when it's used to mislead consumers. Because there's a fine line that can easily be crossed into greenwashing whenever we talk about these very complicated things and whenever we try to simplify them to fit them on the poster. The green marketing guidelines actually state that a claim is greenwashing or a company is greenwashing or a product is greenwashing if the average consumer can interpret the claim in an incorrect fashion. 
And I have an interesting study I think that we should look at. In a recent study of 350 Australian consumers and 350 US consumers, it was found that on an eight question knowledge test about environmental issues, 77% of Australian consumers and 72% of the US consumers could be considered to have high levels of environmental knowledge. However, when asked about carbon offsets, only 37% of Australian consumers and 40% of the US consumers could be classified as high knowledge. Thus, there is a significant lower level of carbon offset knowledge, which might mean that these consumers would be unlikely to interpret claims about carbon offsets correctly. I think we should talk about how some of these carbon offsetting programs are used and I have some examples as well. In January 2020, Air France introduced a plan to carbon offset their 450 daily flights by funding projects that plant trees and protects forests. And while that is a great first step, when it stands alone, it becomes a green alibi, aka greenwashing. The we're going carbon neutral carbon offsetting programs also do not take into account that manufacturing the plane also emits a lot of CO2, methane, etc pollution. And something I think is even more important is that it does not take innovation into account as well. And when we simply just put a little band-aid of carbon offsetting on top of something that's extremely polluting, we do not inspire change or innovation within the industry because now we can simply do this really easy thing instead. I also think it is important to mention that a lot of the companies that are really opting for carbon offsetting are companies that are also inherently quite unsustainable. Many airline companies are opting for carbon offsetting through plant the trees campaigns like British Airways, EasyJets and Air France. Lots of petrol companies and dairy companies are as well and Shell has aimed to plant over 5 million trees within 2020. I however have not been able to find any results of that aim. But with more and more companies turning to carbon offsetting in this sort of way, the industry is growing really, really fast. The CEO of EcoAct, a carbon offsetting company utilized by EasyJet and Air France, among others, stated that since October 2019, approaches from airlines, tour operators, insurance companies and banks have been rising, whether it's about carbon footprint, reducing emissions or carbon offsetting. And EcoAct predicts significant growth in its revenue and in 2019, it was around 20 22 million euros. Significant. <laughs> and some of their other clients are coal companies, cruise ships, dairy companies. I wonder why. Maybe it's because these people are desperately trying to improve their image in a time where they are constantly criticized and constantly boycotted as well. So. But these companies that are inherently unsustainable they are carbon offsetting, isn't that better than doing absolutely nothing? Actually, in 2018, there were twice as many projects linked to forest management and plant the tree campaigns as there were renewable energy. And investing in green energy projects and funding green energy projects might actually be a more sustainable action than planting a tree. And it might actually be something we can see the effects of much, much faster. But I think the reason why a lot of companies aren't doing that is because the plant a tree campaign seem to resonate really, really well with consumers. A study from the European Union in 2016 also showed that 85% of offset projects they looked into promoted their efforts before funding any projects. And that brings me to my next point. <laughs> Why are carbon offsetting so often used in greenwashed marketing? Well, first of all, because it's a voluntary action. Companies do not necessarily have to do anything. They're not forced to carbon offset. They're not forced to do anything to relieve their own impact. It's all voluntary. And that leaves a lot of room in the industry for a lot of misleading information. And all of this is possible because the field of carbon offsetting and the industry of which is not very strictly regulated. Aha, and that creates the perfect conditions for greenwashing. There's also a lot of people who are growing their wealth within the carbon offsetting industry. A lot of clients and brokers are earning bank on selling carbon offsets. Because there are no regulation to speak of in that sort of sense, the profit margin of selling carbon offsets can be extremely high. To control the broker's profit Profit margin, Climate Seed is seeking to establish a fixed margin of 15% in the industry to make sure no one is playing the carbon offsetting scheme for personal profit 
which is indeed already happening. Plant the tree campaigns are often also removing the focus from what the companies that are supporting these campaigns are doing. It's indeed shifting our focus as consumers completely. Instead of looking at companies' contribution to climate change and pollution, we end up celebrating them for doing the bare minimum, and that's just simply not a vibe. It's very much a vibe of reward us for undoing a tiny bit of all the damage that we are continuously causing kind of vibe. <laughs> Yeehaw! Several experts also express concerns about carbon offsetting and tree planting schemes as a trend because it takes the focus away from the fact that we need to reduce emissions across all parts of our economy. And simply carbon offsetting do not eliminate emissions, it often just shifts them. Due to this under-regulated fields, companies can also make claims that are very simplified, like buy one, plant one tree, where it doesn't necessarily seem like the goal here is to plant trees, but more so to make the consumer be more comfortable with the product, aka buying the product. And studies show that people are much more likely to purchase something if they also think they're doing a good deed. These campaigns often cost a lot more than what the consumer is spending. And I've seen countless ads for plant one tree for a dollar campaigns. And it doesn't necessarily seem like those campaigns take into account, first of all, that it takes decades to grow a big tree. And secondly, that during all of these decades, someone needs to maintain and protect the tree and plant the tree too. And all of this is labor. You can't really plant a tree for a dollar. I refuse to believe that you can do that. And every time I've seen one of these campaigns promoting this, they haven't planted as many trees as they said they were going to because yeah, it costs more. <laughs> Rather than creating these campaigns, which are often easy fixes that shifts our focus from the company's contribution to their solution, solution. We should demand for them to pay locals to preserve forests, to pay them actual human wages and encourage natural regeneration and invest in developing agroforestry rather than simply just planting trees. I cannot help but think that planting a tree is the same kind of sustainability as recycling, where it's a great place to start but a really bad place, a really inefficient place to stop. So, how do we avoid greenwashing, which I think is the big question here. Not every company's campaigns or carbon offsetting is equally greenwashing or is equally bad. And while some of these things might be true for some companies, it does not mean that it's true for all of them. And there are actually really, really good campaigns and really good initiatives and programs out there that are not greenwashing. But I would like to add that no matter what, no matter how great and sustainable something is, planting a tree and carbon offsetting must never and never be the excuse to overconsume because overconsumption of any product is always bad. It's always unsustainable. And no matter how much we carbon offset, if we simply just reduce the, our consumption of goods, that is better. That is always better. The reason why I am not necessarily completely writing off carbon offsets altogether is because sometimes you cannot reduce. Sometimes you do have to purchase a product. Sometimes you have to transport yourselves. And in that situation, carbon offsetting can be a really great idea, but it's not an excuse to go and do it. Does that make sense? Do you understand where I'm going? When people cannot refuse something altogether, I think it's great, but it's not great when it's used for an excuse to overconsume and do it more because it's more sustainable because yeah, yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> there are certain certifications in place and they try to create a higher standard within the industry. One of them is the golden standard for voluntary offsetting. Then there's the clean development mechanism. There's B Corporation and quality assurance. And there are also others. And these are some of the projects that actually mean to do better. There is atmosphere, there is native energy, there's carbon offsets to alleviate poverty. There's my climate, Cool Effect, Sustainable Travel International, there's Clear, there's Treedom, and Ecosia. From all the questions I got on Instagram when I asked you guys about this video, I can tell that a lot of you guys are very confused about the carbon offsetting industry. And hey, hello, I am too. It's an incredibly difficult topic to navigate, and I think a lot of companies mean for that to be the case, because the less we understand something, the less we can criticize it. But I hope this video helped you and gave you some clues and ideas on what this thing actually is and what it can do. And I hope you it helped you understand some of these phrases and terms better like carbon neutral, what can it mean, what does it often mean, how, it is, how it's used, how it's misused. I hope that it gave you some sense of clarity because that was sort of my intention. 
let me know down below and if you have any other questions let me know as well and we can talk about it more then um but i think this video is very long i think it's it okay i'm just gonna get on with my conclusion then <laughs> if you want to know whether or not a carbon offsetting project is legit is actually sustainable is actually doing something good look at the project results look at certifications look for profiles of people who work within the project generally the more transparent a project is the better it's doing the more effective it is and the more legit it is and if you want to know whether a company is using carbon offsetting as a legit thing that they do and they mean to or whether or not it's greenwashing look at what the company is doing besides carbon offsetting because companies and industries that are actually interested and ambitious when it comes to sustainability will do more than simply just carbon offsetting so looking at the big picture i know that's a really like vague thing to end up on but i also think it's intensely true we have to look at the big picture and not just at the small tiny tiny things and the soon as we look at a company and its entire profile we will be able to decipher rather quickly whether or not that's actually just greenwashing or whether they mean to do good i hope it makes sense <laughs> as a conclusion i think that carbon offsetting can easily be used as greenwashing in green marketing and as a green alibi but it can actually also do some good i think it's a great idea if you have to travel somewhere or if you have to buy a certain thing doing something good on top of that is a great idea. Personally, I would recommend looking at individual ways uh, for you as a person, as a consumer, to carbon offset rather than trusting that the bigger companies are doing it for you. So, okay, woo! Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you liked it. If you did, leave me a thumbs up and you can leave me a comment, ask me a question or tell me if you like this video. I would really appreciate it. I always appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourselves. Until then, bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.